The simplest gauge theory would just be classical electromagnetism. Uh, one typically thinks that in electromagnetism there are two fundamental fields, the electric field and the magnetic field. Mathematically, however, it's often more convenient to represent the pair of them by a single object, which can be uh, called, or which is called, a gauge potential. And knowing the gauge potential, it's a trivial matter to calculate the electric field and the magnetic field, but it doesn't go the other way. That's to say, there is no unique gauge potential which generates particular magnetic and electric fields. There's a wide choice, in fact, there's a continuously infinite choice. I focused on the physical significance of gauge symmetry. And basically, I argued at length that it has no direct physical significance. It is purely an arbitrary choice of gauge, which by itself can have no physical significance, simply because it's arbitrary. But things change a bit if we move at least one step towards the quantum theory. I say one step because what we do in this context is to keep classical electromagnetism classical. We don't quantize that in the scenario I'm now describing. But what we do is to now represent matter in quantum theory, ordinary quantum theory. So we have electrons, for example, as our quantum systems. And we know that if we have electrons, then we can get them to interfere with themselves. We can pass a beam of electrons one by one through two slits, and we can detect the pattern of hits on the screen. Behind these two very closely spaced slits through which we pass our electron beam, we place a solenoid. What's a solenoid? It's just a, a very long, very carefully, thinly uh, wound uh, wire on a cylinder. What kind of fields does that produce? In the ideal situation I'm describing, it produces zero electric field outside the solenoid and zero magnetic field outside the solenoid. No fields will have no influence on the electrons. False. You can pass a beam of electrons through two slits with a solenoid behind it with carrying a current, and depending on the value of the current, the interference pattern will shift. It's very puzzling because those electrons experience no magnetic field and no electric field, and yet they behave differently. How come? Well, when was this, this was discovered in the 50s by Haranoff and Bohm, they took the explanation to be, well, there's something else involved in classical electromagnetism beyond the electric and magnetic field. There's that potential I was telling you about, and it has physical significance, and this illustrates the physical significance of the potential. But, as I already pointed out, the particular value of the potential is not doing anything, uh, because what the interference pattern is sensitive to is not the actual value of the potential anywhere. You can put the value of anything you like at any point. What you can't do is choose values such that when you look at the values all the way around the solenoid, they're everywhere zero. The way I thought about this when I first thought about it was, well, there is something that's real, but it's not the electric and magnetic fields here, and it's not the potential either. It's something like a property of the entire loop that encircles the solenoid. It's not something that takes values at particular points, but takes values on, in this case, closed loops. So what kind of thing is that? It's not a local thing. It's not locally defined. It's defined only on, in this case, a loop that cannot be contracted to zero. The standard model is not a classical gauge theory. It doesn't contain classical gauge theories. It contains quantized gauge theories. So what story emerges there? And my hope there, when I pursuing this project a number of years ago, was to, to maintain the same story in that context too. So now we get back to quantum field theory. For a long time, I was really worried about quantum field theories because I wanted to know what they were about. Now, philosophers have a fancy word for this. They call it ontology. Ontology is a theory of what there is. It wasn't particles. Particles emerged, but it wasn't about particles. That wasn't the fundamental ontology. Um, and the fundamental ontology certainly wasn't quantum fields because these were just mathematical things. They were operators uh, or operator-valued functions or whatever. Okay. And I thought, well, maybe people have been going about this in the wrong way. They thought, well, quantum field theories, they're either about particles or about fields. Um, and I thought, well, Maybe they're not about either particles or fields. Maybe they're about these other things, these non-local objects, um, whose mathematical representation is in terms of something called a holonomy, a fancy word. But on the view I was pursuing, it math mathematically re represents something physically real, which is a non-local object. And I thought, that was a cool idea. Maybe I can finally figure out what quantum field theories are about. It's about these holonomy-type objects. Um, and I pursued that for all it was worth, but it didn't really work. Why didn't it work? Ultimately, I came to the conclusion 
that it didn't work because it didn't work in quantum theory, in generically. My present perspective uh, on this issue is that uh, we don't expect an ontology for quantum field theory to emerge from harder thinking about quantum field theory. What we can hope for is some future revolution in, in physics that gets rid of quantum field theories and replaces them with, with some theory that comes armed with its own fundamental ontology. That's a reasonable hope. It's the kind of hope you'd expect someone like Einstein or, or Bell to express. Um, but it's a hope. It's not a requirement for the progress of physics. The quantum field theories we've got are great. They work extremely well. And the desire to, to meet this further requirement, which I actually think of as metaphysical rather than a, a requirement coming from physics itself, um, is one that we may or may not be able to meet in the future. I tend to think my general view on quantum theories is that they're not that kind of theory. So if we, if we, we shouldn't insist that a quantum theory come up with its ontology and desperately look for one. I think that's a wild goose chase myself. But we can still hope for some future theory that will give us, come equipped with its own ontology from which we can understand why quantum theories of any kind worked as well as they do.